so good to see you all. Thank you for uh, coming out in the middle of a, a snowstorm and polar bears and penguins bouncing off roads. Uh, you guys did phenomenal to make it here. Uh, this morning, as you are probably aware, is the beginning of the season of Advent. We've made it through another year, and we get to celebrate the coming of the one who changed everything, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, the verses that Ormond and Terry uh, read just earlier when the candle was lit deal with history in advance. Many of those verses were written 800 years before the birth of Jesus, some of them even before then. We have a little child who's lost. Hey, Aaliyah, that way. You can see this? Cool. The verses of Scripture that were read point us to someone who is coming. For hundreds and hundreds of years, people knew that the Messiah would be coming. And the word Messiah simply means the one who would come to make everything right. Uh, in the Hebrew, the Messiah was known to the Jews. To the Gentiles who were coming to believe in Yahweh, God, they knew him as the Christ, which is what we would know him as, Jesus Christ. He's the one who would come to make everything right. So we're going to open the scriptures this morning. We're going to start where we left off with the kids. And as we do this, as always, we're going to need some help. We cannot understand this book on our own. So let's ask the Lord to speak to us. Father in heaven, thank you that you gave promises thousands of years ago, Lord. You had them written down so that we would have them in our hands today to read about, to know, Lord, that you are faithful, that your promises never fail, that you're not a man that you should lie, Lord, that you tell the truth because you are the truth. You're the only way, the truth, and the life. Lord, thank you that we can know you because of your son, Jesus. And Lord, as we open up the book this morning, Lord, in these few brief moments, Lord, we pray that you would speak as only you can. Lord, we pray that you would touch each one of us as you know we need. In Jesus' name, amen. In the book of Luke, chapter 19, verse 10, at 33 and a half years old, the Lord Jesus Christ said this. Now, we, we heard just a little bit while ago that as a baby, he came as a missionary. He was on a mission sent by his father from heaven to earth. And that mission was to come 33 and a half years later, as Jesus would say, he came to seek and to save that which is lost. He came to seek, to hunt down every single one of us. And he's been seeking people for 2,000 years. That's why Jesus came. He's a missionary, and he's God. Now, we read a little bit from the Scriptures in the beginning of Luke chapter 2. It said that the uh, shepherds, when they had heard and they had seen Jesus, they spread the word concerning all that had been told them about this child. That's verse 17. In verse 18, it says, everyone who heard were amazed at what the shepherds told them. Everyone was amazed at this child. Uh, in 1865, uh, William Chatterton Dix wrote down some words, which then five years later became a Christmas hymn, a Christmas carol, and we sing it often. What child is this? What child is this? I won't sing it. It's to the tune of green sleeves, you know, good old Henry VIII, but what child is this? Everyone was amazed. The shepherds were amazed. Mary and Joseph were amazed. Everyone was amazed. This child was no ordinary child. This was not your regular baby being born, and the angels had already testified to it. Mary, who knew her scriptures, because she had also been visited by angels, as had Joseph, they were well aware that this was no ordinary child. What child is this? And it says this. It says in verse 19 of Luke chapter 2, But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. For 2,000 years, people have been pondering, what child is this? And they've been thinking about all the things that the scriptures tell us about this child, the Lord Jesus. How he would come as a baby, how he would grow, how he would become a man, how ultimately he would go to a cross to die in your place and mine as our substitute. What child is this? And Mary treasured every single thought up in her heart. 
we're going to be treasuring some things this morning. Hopefully, we'll be treasuring some things for the rest of the Christmas season, all the way into the new year, all the way up until the Lord returns or takes us home. What child is this? Now, in Luke chapter 2, verse 21, we see something fascinating. Because Jesus has been around forever. He's the Son of God. He's the second person of the Trinity. Micah 5, 2, he says that his goings are from everlasting to everlasting. He's eternal. He's God. That's Jesus. He's the Christ, the Messiah, the one who's coming to make all things right. And he would be born in Bethlehem. That's Micah 5, 2, 800 years before, uh, sorry, 400 years before uh, the actual event was prophesied, and then it happened. History in advance. And Mary knew these verses. She knew that this baby she was carrying was the Messiah, and she pondered these things. And this is God who is perfect. In his divinity, Jesus was not a sinner. He never did anything wrong. In his humanity, he was perfect. And yet, we see Mary and Joseph doing something that they probably didn't need to do, but they did it because Jesus, even as a baby, was identifying with you and with me as sinners. God had picked the right parents. I don't know if you've ever thought of yourself, if you have kids or you've had kids and they've grown up, if you were the right parents. Did I do a good job? God picks the right parents for every kid. And then the task that we have as parents is to get to know Jesus and to make him known. Same task that people that don't have kids have. It's always the same mission, to know Jesus and to make him known. And Mary and Joseph, they were getting to know Jesus long before they even had Jesus. They were reading their Old Testament Bible. They knew the scripture verses. They knew everything about this coming child. And so in verse 21, they knew that they had to obey what Leviticus 12 told them to do when they had a firstborn child. Even though he did not sin, in his humanity, this is what they did, just like any Jew would do with any child. It says, on the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he, and that's Joseph, na- uh, he was named Jesus. He who saves, that's what the word Jesus means, or Joshua, or Yeshua. He who saves. The name that the angel had given him before he was conceived. Verse 22. And when the time came for the purification rites required for, by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Get this. This is God. This is God. And Mary and Joseph have been picked, handpicked by God to be his parents as he comes to become a human being, just like you and me, so he can identify with you and me. And Mary and Joseph are sinners. That means they fail to meet the perfect righteous requirement of God. They do things wrong, just like you and me. And God is saying, you guys, you're imperfect, and I'm picking you to raise the Son of God. Can you imagine what is going on? No wonder Mary was pondering in her heart and treasuring up everything she'd read about this child, how he would save people from their sins. And she obeys the Lord, and she brings God to God. She says, I'm going to dedicate this human being to you, Lord, even though I know he's also God. And I'm dedicating him to you just like I would any other child. And I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to dedicate him and raise him to know you. That is what they're doing here. Both Joseph and Mary are obedient to the Old Testament requirement that children be brought to the Lord, be dedicated to the Lord. Uh, We see this in 1 Samuel uh, 13 with Hannah dedicating her child Samuel. Uh, we see this in the New Testament um, in 1 Timothy 3.14, where Timothy was dedicated by Lois and Eunice, um, his mother and his grandmother, to the Lord, to be raised to know the Scriptures. They were dedicating their kids. In Psalm 51, verse 5, it says that we are all born in sin. Jesus was not a sinner. Now, your kids and my kids, just like we We're all born in sin. Something very different. Now, in case you're not really sure about that, I have a little video that we have put together. Okay, if you want to play this. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time. Oop, it's gone, but I'll read them to you after. Here we go. Oh.
Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. That's Psalm 51.5, Proverbs 22.15. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child. And it's true. It was true when you were born and I was born. It was true when we had our kids. It's true for every single child on this planet. Every one of us comes into this world fallen short of the glory of God. And so God sent Jesus to come to do that which we could not do ourselves. A little baby born as a human being, just like us, to go to a cross to die in our place. He was born to die. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Deuteronomy 6.4. Now, we've been looking at this as we've been going through the book of Ephesians. Uh, Deuteronomy 6.4 was a commandment that parents raise their kids to know the Lord, when they sit down, when they stand up, when they walk together, when they do life together, whenever they can be together, they're to teach their kids all about the Lord, about the scriptures, about what God thinks about life, what is right, what is wrong, what is morality, and more than that, what is divinity? How do you know God? How do you walk with him? How do you let him take control of your life and lead you? So it's not just you doing good things, it's God doing it through you. How do you do that? They're to teach their kids. And so Mary and Joseph take Jesus, they dedicate him in the temple to the Lord, and they start to raise him. And they start to teach him the scriptures. Jesus is the word. John 1, 1, he is, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. And John 1, 14, that same word became flesh, a human being, a baby, and dwelt amongst us. And he was full of grace and glory. Amazing, amazing child. What child is this? And this is the child who came so that you and I could know God. To verse 25 of Luke chapter 2. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the salvation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. Now we've been talking about Israel. Uh, the importance of what's going on right now in the Middle East. Uh, 2,000 years ago, there was a remnant, there was a handful of individuals that looked to God. They took the Bible seriously. They understood that every single word of God in Proverbs 30 is pure. It's pure. It's holy. And it's true for all eternity. And these individuals that were around at the time of the baby Jesus being born, the time when Jesus grew up to be a kid and then become an adult and then die on the cross. These were individuals that understood that the Old Testament had already told everything in advance. This is going to happen. This was the Messiah. He's the one who's going to make everything right. And he has to die to do it. But he will be returning. He's alive today. And Simeon was one of these individuals. He understood by faith the way that Abraham by faith, look to the Lord, and it was accredited to him as righteousness. And by faith, you and I look to the Lord Jesus today, even though we don't see him. And we walk by faith, not by sight. And through the Christmas season, as there will be people's lives falling apart around us, it may even be our own, we walk by faith, not by sight. And we tell them the good news. The child has been born. He grew up, he died on the cross for you and for me, and today you can know him in a personal way, and he will make everything right. He's the only one that can. This is the Lord Jesus. And Simeon was ready. What child is this? And he knew what child this was. He was waiting for the salvation of Israel. He knew that it wouldn't happen right there and then, but he knew it was coming. And of course, one day the Messiah will return. Jesus will be coming back, and all that war in the Middle East will be ended, but not until he returns. But for us, wars in our own hearts, wars in our own minds can cease when we come to this child. And so Simeon comes to the child as he's being dedicated to the Lord. Verse 26, it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's, and there's the word, Messiah, the Christ, the one who would make everything right. So verse 27, moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts and as the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was the custom of the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, you have promised, and now you may dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight 
of all nations. The Lord wants everyone to be saved. Not everyone will be. There will be folks that reject him. But the Lord wants everyone to be saved. He is a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. It's interesting that Jesus is still the light of the glory of Israel, even today in the Middle East. There are many who are turning to Christ. There are those who have come to that point where they realize they need a savior. Jesus is that Messiah. It says the child's father and mother, verse 33, marveled at what was being said about him. They were amazed. They were astonished. What child is this? Now, a little bit later, as you go through Luke chapter 2, we see verse 47, Jesus is 12 years old. He's teaching in the temple. In other words, Mary and Joseph had been raising him to know the scriptures, raising him to know who God was. And because he's God, he took a hold of the scriptures that he himself wrote, and he understood who he was. And he began to obey the mission that his father had sent him to do. God picked the right parents, parents who knew they were sinners. Parents who knew they couldn't do it on their own. Parents who knew they had to dedicate him to God. Every single one of us has to dedicate our kids or our family members or our work colleagues or our friends that we want to know to come to see Jesus. We need to dedicate them to the Lord. And as we do that, we then take every opportunity as the Holy Spirit leads us to teach them about God. And this is what Mary and Joseph did with Jesus. And at 12 years of age, he's in the temple and it says, everyone was amazed when they heard him teach. What child is this? It goes on in verse 40. It says that the child grew. If I can find my verse 40, I've lost it. If anyone finds it before me, yell it out. <laughs> oh, here we are, here we are. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. The grace of God was upon him, filled with wisdom. That's the prayer that every one of us has for our kids, our grandkids. That's the prayers that we have as Christian teachers in schools who are praying that for certain kids that, who know they know their Lord, praying that they grow in wisdom, that the grace of God will be upon them. And for those that don't know the Lord, that they might come into that relationship. Then we read on. Verse 51, it says, But Mary, his mother, treasured all these things in her heart. She saw how amazing her son Jesus was becoming because he was God, because he knew the scriptures and he knew who he was, the son of God. And she treasured it all up in her heart again, storing up treasures. We are to store up treasures in our heart every time we ponder and think upon the Lord Jesus Christ. You will never get to the end. You will never exhaust how amazing, how beautiful, how wonderful Jesus is. And as you do that, he will start to give you treasures to store up about your own kids, your family, your brother, your sister, your mother, your grandparents, people who you work with, people that you play golf with, people that you go shopping with. The treasure is that Jesus came to save them, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Luke 2, verse 52. And Jesus kept increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. And that is the four categories that every single one of us has to grow in. And that's which parents, when they dedicate their kids to the Lord, that's what they pray that the Lord will help them with. That their children will grow in wisdom, that's their mental faculties, but knowledge applied. Not just that they'll become smart and maybe become an engineer or a doctor, it'd be great if they do that, but ultimately that they be able to apply knowledge in life, think critically with God and know how to navigate. They grow in wisdom, then they grow in stature, that's how Jesus grew, which is physically, be healthy, teach them how to eat the good food, what's right, what's wrong, no, no to sugar and all that good stuff. To grow in favor with God, that's spiritual. To know the scriptures, to know how to pray, and to go to God with their own faith, not their parents' faith, and then to grow in favor with man. That's to have a social interaction with others, to be able to be confident in who they are in Christ once they come to know Jesus as Savior, and then to be able to tell others about what they found, the good news. This is why Mary and Joseph dedicated them to the Lord. We need all the help we can get. We just saw those kids on the screen. When they were born, they were born into sin. 
We have two little children ourselves, Aaliyah and James. They were also born into sin. I was born into sin. Every one of us is born into sin. Now, my mother probably thought I was an angel when I was born. I was a viper in a diaper. <laughs> I wasn't cute. As soon as we're born, we can't even hold our heads up the first couple of months. We need help. We barely open our eyes. We can't talk. We can't walk. There's nothing we can contribute to society. But boy, do we let everyone know that we're ruling the roost. <laughs> that angry little cry starts early. The leg stiffening starts early. The selfishness starts early. That's what sin does. And God takes us, sinners, as we're stiffening our legs, trying to rule the roost. And he lovingly teaches us about his grace and his mercy. And as parents in this world with children, we need all the help we can get. So actually, right now, I'm going to ask Laura to come on up with, with James. And Ali, if you can come up here. And I'm going to ask Pastor Richard. If you can come on up here. Uh, I'm not going to pray for us. as We're going to dedicate our two kids. It'll be self-serving if I pray. Uh, and I need help here. So I'm going to ask pa our pastor, Emeritus, to come on up. And I still say that wrong, don't I? Emer Emeritus? Emer 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 awesome. Yeah, <laughs> Emeritus. You'll get it eventually. <laughs> I will, won't I? <laughs> Um, if you could pray for us. And then after this, we're actually going to ask you guys to stand and pray for us as well. So can I. Thank you. Gracious Father, we, we lift up this beautiful family to you. Uh, th these two beautiful children have been placed specifically where they're at. And Lord, we pray that as Simon and Laura raise these kids, that they were, we, we're really asking, Lord, for something we know is happening, but we want your grace, we want your, your mercy to be in this whole situation as they, as they bring these kids up in the learning and the admonition of the Lord. Lord, we, what, how important that is. And, and we just thank you that you have brought them to us here at Sylvester Community Church to bless us as well and fill us with their grace. Bless them now and watch over them and all they do. Keep them healthy and, and strong and, and all those things, Lord, we, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky kid. <laughs> you know, every single one of us, if you know Jesus Christ, you're a child of the living God, and your Father in heaven is dedicated to raising you to know him. In Ephesians 6, verse 4. You guys go and sit down. Thanks, guys. I want you guys to get out on time, so now I'm... <laughs> we still got communion. Ephesians 6, verse 4. Um, We've lo been looking at that as well as we've been going through the book of Ephesians. It says, uh, raise your kids. Um, it says, fathers, raise your kids. But the word, pat uh, uh, the word patara there means parents. And really, that's what it should be translated in the context. But parents, raise your kids in the instruction of the Lord. Exactly what Mary and Joseph did. Raise them to know the Lord. And there is something about parents who recognize they cannot do it on their own. They need the Lord. And Laura and I know we cannot <laughs> raise kids in this world without the Lord. Every one of us needs the Lord. And Mary and Joseph did something that was very interesting. And we're going to go back, um, back in Luke chapter 2. When they start to dedicate, um, verse, I will find it. Here we are. Verse 22, um, it says, Now when the days of, this is Mary's purification, according to the law of Moses was completed, this is Leviticus 12, she's obeying. Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. So they go into the temple, and it's because, verse 23 says, it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb, in other words, as a child, shall be called holy to the Lord. He's the firstborn. And so they're going to present him to the Lord. They're going to dedicate him just as they are told to in the Bible and to offer a sacrifice. That's not something we do today because there has been a sacrifice already. And the sacrifice, according to the law of the Lord, 
is a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, if you go back to Leviticus 12 and you read that, it says that they're actually to sacrifice a lamb unless they can't afford a lamb, in which case they sacrifice two turtle doves or two pigeons. Mary recognized that she was a sinner. Luke chapter 1, verse 47, uh, we would know it as the Magnificat. She's praising God. She says, um, uh, she praises God uh, for me, a sinner. She recognized that she needed a savior. The very one she was carrying was her savior, would grow up to die for her. And, and so Mary and Joseph, instead of a lamb, because they have no money, because they live in poverty, um, they give two turtle doves. Little did they know, though, as they're giving that sacrifice uh, in honor of the Lord, the lamb was in their presence, and the lamb would grow up in their household, and the lamb would continue to look to the scriptures, continue to pray to God in heaven, and then the lamb would then go to the cross, and the lamb would die for them, and the lamb would die for you. Mary pondered all these things in her heart. She fought and she stored up treasure. Now, we're going to have communion now as we prepare to close. There is a lamb that was slain on your behalf and mine. He did that which we could not do ourselves. We could never pay for the sins that we commit, all of our failures, all of the things that fall short of the glory of God. Every single one of us has cheated, lied. We fought thoughts that we should not think at times. I've gotten angry at my two sisters, I tell you. We used to fight all the time growing up. Jesus calls that murder. I hated them in my heart. I'm not a murderer. Yet the Bible says, yes, yes, I am. Again, a viper in a diaper. And it doesn't change. The older we get, the more we need the Lord. We need the Lord. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel by clicking the link on the upper left hand side of your screen so you can see all of our videos when they come out. Or you can watch last Sunday's sermon by clicking the video link on the bottom left of your screen. From all of us at Sylvester Community Church, thank you and God bless.